This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More on that later, as long as these giant spiders don't scare you away first. Speed. Power. Paralyzing Venom. These are what make the wolf spider one of the most formidable hunters of the micro world in our backyards. After dark, the open ground becomes their domain. And if you dare to shine a light at night, you might see the glittering of the void staring back as these giant spiders begin their hunt. These are extremely nocturnal spiders. Once in a while, you'll find them out in the daytime if they get like their cover disturbed or something. But by and large, they're gonna be hunting under cover of darkness. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and wolf spiders are among my absolute favorites. In my mission to uncover the secrets of the natural world, I found that despite how common these spiders are, their biology is more mysterious than you'd think. How do wolf spiders hunt so effectively in the pitch black of night? What makes them so fast and precise? And with their giant size and huge fangs, what threats do they pose to us? To answer these questions, we're gonna head out under cover of nightfall and get hands-on with some giant spiders to discover what secrets the wolf spider is hiding. All right, so a big eye shine right here. And this is exactly what I've been looking for. A big roaming male. Now, he's probably gonna be quick. So I've got to catch him. Oh, hello, buddy. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. Just like that. So let's see if I can get him to come out and cooperate. He might. Nope. This is an adult male giant wolf spider. You can see, that's a pretty decent sized spider. Nope. Pretty decent size. Oh, 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 he's fast. The wolf spider gets its name from the speed and ferocity with which it hunts its prey. One of the fastest spiders on the planet, they can move over 16 times their body length every second. Scaled to human size, these spiders would be able to run over 65 miles per hour, rivaling the fastest land animals on Earth. This speed also means they can quickly disappear into the shadows when evading a giant threat like me. When we think of wolf spiders, we picture these big, beefy, hairy spiders. Some people even confuse them for tarantulas. And because these are the sprinters of the spider world, their appearance makes them look packed with muscle. But what's interesting is their muscles actually work a lot differently than ours do. Our muscles almost work kind of like a pulley system. They're attached to different parts of our skeleton and they basically pull on joints to create movement. Spider muscles work more like pumps. Inside a spider's body cavity, they have this fluid called hemolymph. It's kind of like their blood. And like a hydraulic machine, muscles in the spider's cephalothorax can pump this hemolymph into their legs to create movement. In the case of the wolf spider, this pump is supercharged to create explosive bursts of speed. And while they're hurtling across the forest floor or your lawn, the hairs that cover their bodies are picking up tiny bits of information along the way. They aren't just furry for show. These hairs actually penetrate their hard exoskeleton to act as an extension of their nervous system, a bridge to the outside world that picks up vibrations and sensory information, which allows the wolf spider to understand its surroundings in acute detail at every turn. While their hairs are great for sensing, their eyes actually do a lot of heavy lifting and might be one of the most insane things about wolf spider biology. To make the most of their strength and speed, the wolf spider needs a visual detection system to actually track its targets. And they do not disappoint. Wolf spiders have the third best vision of all spiders in the world. And while they are arthropods, they actually don't have compound eyes like insects. Their eyes are actually a lot more similar to ours. See, our eyes, we normally think of this part right here in the middle as being what sees, the iris and the pupil. But these are actually more of a lens that sends light to sensors in the back of our eyes. That's where the magic of vision happens. Spider eyes are basically the same. Those big circles we see are actually their lenses. And deep in the back are actually all the little photoreceptive cells that actually interpret what the wolf spider is seeing which is pretty crazy, right? At first glance, spiders look like some of the most alien creatures in the world, right? They freak so many people out, but they're actually a lot less different from us than we think. Those large eyes right in the front of the wolf spider's face are really impressive. They have enough sensitivity that they can see not just images like we can, but also colors, which is crazy for an animal that small that spends most of its time active after dark. 
And the most unusual secrets aren't in their iconic giant eyes, but actually the little eyes that surround the wolf spider's head. These all act like little sensors, feeding information to the spider's brain about the environment around it, which is unbelievably helpful for not getting lost in the leaf litter. It may be an easy environment for us to navigate, but even the biggest wolf spiders are only an inch tall. If they get lost and exposed out here, they are a very enticing snack for birds and other large spiders. But how do these little eyes help? One of the things wolf spiders are best known for is the way their eyes glitter after dark when you're shining a light around, right? This is actually not from their big eyes, but it's actually from the little eyes that kind of go over their face like this. These eyes have a membrane called a tapetum lucidum, which basically functions to amplify light so they can see in almost total darkness. But these eyes don't actually see images in the same way the main ones do. So what are they seeing? Well, it turns out that these four little eyes are actually in two separate groups. Those center ones, right in the middle, actually help the wolf spider determine what direction it's heading. They're almost more like a compass. And that outer pair actually measure the distance the wolf spiders traveled. This is where it gets kind of wild. From these two sets of eyes, the wolf spider is able to create a mental map of its surroundings when it's traveling after dark, and they've been seen to use this information to actually travel on the shortest path back to their burrow, even if that's not the path they took. They're essentially creating right triangles in their brain, where the journey they've taken are the horizontal and vertical directions, and the path back is that hypotenuse. Now I've heard it all. A spider that can do geometry. I remember the hypotenuse giving me trouble back in high school, and here's an arachnid that can calculate it in seconds without any tools. And those curious little eyes are the key. When I'm studying some of nature's most unusual creatures, I always say their appearances can help give us clues about their biology. But it takes practice to think like a scientist and actually decipher these clues. Luckily, there's a free and easy way to learn just that. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively. I've been obsessed with their courses and scientific thinking because they show how the world is full of observable patterns and teach how to apply them in creative ways. Just like how they've helped me to learn how to interpret the behavior and anatomy of some of the frightening spiders on my adventures. Whether you're a complete beginner or ready for some advanced topics, Brilliant will show you how to use creative problem solving to unlock the secrets of not just our natural world, but technology and math as well. Want to know how the device you're watching this video on works? Try out their courses in computer science. If you're curious about the world around you, Brilliant has something for you. But don't take my word for it. Act like a scientist and test it out for yourself completely free for a full 30 days at Brilliant.org slash my wild backyard or using the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription and you'll be helping out a brand that makes this channel possible. Try Brilliant today. It's pretty cool. And what's also pretty cool is what this insane vision means about the wolf spider. Normally, we give jumping spiders credit as being the most intelligent arachnids, but after we're done here, you're not gonna look at wolf spiders the same. In order to navigate the complex matrix of leaf litter and grasslands, wolf spiders need to have incredible intelligence. But it doesn't stop there. These spiders aren't just calculating distances and processing images, they can learn. We don't 100% know how a wolf spider's brain works because we haven't really strapped electrodes to them or done as much work on their cognition as we have with like jumping spiders. But there are some studies that suggest some pretty incredible stuff is going on inside a wolf spider's head. Turns out wolf spiders can actually be picky eaters. Over the course of their lives, they can actually build preferences about what prey items have the best nutritional value, are the easiest to hunt, and which ones aren't. We've also seen that wolf spiders have a lot more individual personality than we might have thought for a tiny little eight-legged arachnid. And here's what's crazy. Human personality is largely built on our experiences and how we perceive the world. Turns out wolf spiders build their personalities in the exact same way which means they have some method of storing long-term memory and learning from it. Learning is one of the most important things in animal cognition. If you can learn, you can adapt. If you adapt, you survive. The ability to learn means that wolf spiders can piece together new information to help them understand unfamiliar situations. These are spiders that can be reasoned with. This right here is the biggest wolf spider we have here in North America, on the entire continent. They're big, hairy spiders with those huge, huge fangs, which creeps a lot of people out. But the nice thing about wolf spiders is, 
and see as she's walking, they're actually complete sweethearts. Once you get to know these spiders, they are probably one of the most darling animals you will ever see. Across dozens of species of wolf spider that I've worked with, this holds true. They have to be really encouraged to even think about biting. But what is the bite like? There are sources on the internet that list wolf spiders as one of the more dangerous spiders, but What's the reality? Wolf spider venom is primarily neurotoxic. When it comes to their prey, it basically acts as a paralyzing enzyme. But with humans, we really don't see that. In fact, most of the pain and problems you'd have from a wolf spider bite would be just the mechanical damage of their fangs breaking your skin. For as large of a spider as they are, their venom really isn't that effective against animals as large as humans are. Now, of course, you're probably asking, well, Spencer, you know, big fangs, it's a spider that lives on the ground. What about like a secondary infection? Well, that's the interesting part about wolf spider venom too, is it's actually antiseptic. And this makes sense. A lot of the insects they're gonna be hunting are like crickets and cockroaches, detrivores that are feeding on dead, decaying things which means there's gonna be a lot of bacteria involved in eating those insects. And just like you or I wouldn't want to have that kind of bacteria getting into our system, the wolf spider doesn't either. So it would be to the wolf spider's benefit to have compounds in their venom that break down that bacteria to prevent them from getting infections. So you're not gonna get these horrible, necrotic, rotting wounds from wolf spider bites. Really the worst you'd ever expect to get is a red, itchy, sore bump. A wolf spider will only bite in defense. Large spiders are not. Look at even this giant Carolina wolf spider compared to my hand. They don't stand a chance in a 1v1 fight. There is one scenario where a wolf spider will be a bit grumpier though, and it actually has to do with why I consider them one of the sweetest spiders in the world. They will fight to their last breath to keep their young safe. Now this is a big wolf spider. I'm not sure what species, I can't see any identifying markings, but look at that on her back. Probably over a hundred babies. Normally you think of wolf spiders, you think of these really creepy, monstrous arachnids, but they're actually one of the few arachnids that engages in parental care. They actually care for their young. You look closer and closer, there's just waves of these spiderlings stacked on top of each other. It is so incredible to look at. And I guarantee you, this is a wolf spider I wouldn't want to handle. They are extremely defensive of their young. All wolf spiders do this, and the spiderlings will stay with their mothers for a couple weeks before they scatter into the surrounding environment. Some will survive, and some won't. But those who learn fastest and adapt will become the scourge of the forest floor. The nocturnal hunters with eyes that glitter in the darkness. The silent stalkers that spell doom for any insect that dares enter their domain. With such insane biology, it's no wonder why wolf spiders have become one of the most successful arachnids on the planet, with over 2,000 species worldwide. But they actually come from a wider lineage of even more highly intelligent, active hunting spiders, where each group is more incredible than the last. One of my favorite of their evolutionary cousins are actually the wandering spiders, which are famous for the incredibly deadly species down in South America. But what most people don't know is we actually have wandering spiders here in the U.S. as well, and I recently went on an expedition to Florida to find the largest of them. If you want to see that video, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.